If you've ever built a mechanical keyboard with a hot swap PCB and you have encountered a single key that doesn't work or even an entire column or row of keys that don't work, there's a good chance you might have lifted a hot swap socket pad. Hi, it's Chris from the Mode Designs team, and in this video, we're going to show you what's involved in repairing a lifted hot swap socket pad so that you can decide if you want to repair it or pick up a replacement PCB instead. So first, what is a lifted pad and keyboard matrix and why it doesn't work? Keyboard switches are arranged in a grid of rows and columns. Each keyboard switch has two pins, and each pin is either connected to a row or a column. The rows and columns are connected with traces on the PCB, which are thin copper lines that run along the top surface of the PCB. Hot swap sockets are soldered onto square pads that serve as the connection points of the switch to the various rows and columns. When switches are pressed into hot swap sockets, alignment issues can cause large forces on the hot swap socket itself. We always recommend bracing the hot swap socket from the rear or pressing down on a rigid flat surface to prevent hot swap sockets from popping off. When a hot swap socket does pop off, the small square pad that connects the socket to a row or column typically breaks off from the rest of the copper trace, leaving the entire pad still attached to the hot swap socket that has popped off. Depending on how the PCB was routed in the area of the lifted hot swap socket pad, the result is either a single switch that doesn't work properly or an entire column or row that does not work properly. Now, note here that if a single switch isn't registering properly and the hot swap socket does look fully intact and not lifted off the PCB, it could also be an issue with the diode. Each switch has one diode that connects it to the matrix on just one of the two switch legs to prevent ghosting. Check that the diode is still attached and lightly reflow to solder that connects it by simply melting it slightly with your soldering iron and letting it harden again. This could also happen to the hot swap socket pad itself, but it is a lot less common than an entire hot swap socket lifting off. So how do you fix the lifted hot swap socket? The process is relatively straightforward if you have the correct tools. For this process, you'll need super glue to hold the socket back in place, a thin gauge wire like a daughter board wire, anything between 28 gauge and 20 gauge should work just fine, and you'll also need wire strippers, scissors, or a knife, and of course, soldering equipment. So first, start by unplugging your PCB and setting up your electrical workspace. Our first step will be attaching the hot swap socket to the PCB by using a few drops of super glue. This will mechanically hold the socket in place. You don't need a lot and a little bit goes a long way. Gel super glue is great here if you have some. Next, we need to restore the electrical connection of the hot swap socket to the adjacent row and or column. We need to determine what the closest adjacent row and column pins are from the surrounding switches. We need to identify which of the hot swap socket pads goes to the column and which one goes to a row. Us here at Mode has shared PCB diagrams of the bare PCB substrates that you can find linked in the description down below for troubleshooting purposes. If you need help figuring out where you should solder on your jumper wires, you can always ask for help in our Build Help channel in the Mode Discord. So for this example, the Z key socket has popped off and must be repaired. When testing the PCB in VIA, the Z key was unresponsive. Inspecting the row and column matrix here, we can see that the left-hand socket is connected to the column and the right-hand socket is connected to the row. On our mode PCBs, the diode is typically between the row pin and the switch, so you can figure out pretty easily which side of the socket is for the row and which side is for the column. The row side has a diode on it and the column side does not. Using jumper wires, we will connect the column pad to the right alt key that is underneath it in the column and the row pad to the X key next to it in the row. To do this, start by cutting a small section of wire that has enough room for a slight bend. Strip the ends of the wire and add a little bit more solder to the hot swap socket pad. Now solder one end of the wire to that pad and perform the same step on the other pad that you'll be connecting it to. Make sure that the wire sits flat on the PCB and lightly tug on the wire to make sure that it is solidly connected to the hot swap socket. Continue this process with the other side of the hot swap socket, adding another jumper wire to connect the socket to either the row or the column. The jumper wires now electrically connect the hot swap socket back into the rows and columns that they belong in, and the PCB should work as expected again. Plug in the PCB and test the repair using a pair of tweezers across the hot swap socket. If just that key still doesn't work, check that the jumper wires are properly connected. The problem could also be a loose diode connected to that switch. If you don't have the tools required for this type of repair, we do always stock extra PCBs for all of our keyboards on our website. But hopefully, this will help you figure out how to repair your PCB's hot swap socket. For any technical questions, order help, or any other inquiries, feel free to email our support team at support at modesigns.com.